Welcome. So, we are in discussing about the isoperimetric problem in the last lecture and uh, uh, the statement uh, what we wanted to prove is that if we take a simple closed curve for uh, C 1 and uh, then with the fixed perimeter fixed length arc length fixed then what we among all those curve the circle is going to have the maximum area. So, in other words this what it says that if L is the length then this inequality holds A is the area is lesser equal to L square by 4 pi and this inequality is called the isoperimetric inequality. Okay. So, and then the equality holds if and only if gamma is a circle. So, now let us look at the proof. So, we can enough it is enough to prove for L equal to 1 otherwise we can change uh, uh, just by the parameter. Okay. So, gamma is closed therefore, x and s they are the function from 0 to 2 pi to r and 0 is equal to 2 pi x of 0 is equal to x of 2 pi because uh, uh, x 0 y 0 this is equal to x 2 pi uh, y 2 pi. So, it is a closed curve means that. So, now uh, x 0 is equal to x 2 pi. So, we can think of this as a function on this and which is a 2 pi periodic function. So, once we uh, have got 2 pi periodic function then we have the full power of the Fourier series to employ. So, therefore, the Fourier series of x s is a n e to the power i n s and y s b n e to the power i n s where a n is the Fourier coefficient of x and b n is the Fourier coefficient of uh, y. So, now if I take the derivative then because it is a C 1 curve. So, uh, x is in C 1 we know that the Fourier series converges absolutely. So, we can do the term by term differentiation. So, by differentiating with respect to s we get this is a n i n e to the power i n s and y prime of s b n e to the power i n s. Now, as you can see that I mean in order to find the L, L is always given in terms of x prime and y prime. So, by Percival identity, so now mod of n square a n square, so this is equal to, so Percival identity says that mod of n square mod of a n square, this is equal to integral over mod of x prime of s square d s. So, now this is the L 2 norm. So, this if I take the parametrization arc length parametrization. So, this is going to be equal to 1. So, this is what we have got. So, equation number 1 is n mod n square plus mod a n square plus mod b n square is equal to 1. Okay. So, remember that x both x and y as a map they are real map. Therefore, x s bar is equal to x s and y s bar is equal to y s. So, therefore, uh, x s bar if I take then the Fourier series is going to look like a n bar e to the power minus of i n s. So, because uh, x s bar is equal to summation over n a n e to the power i n s bar. If I take the bar this side because it is real this is x s. So, therefore, a n bar e to the power minus i n s. Similarly, the Fourier series of y s bar is this and y s bar is equal to y s. So, this these two are equal. So, therefore, by the equality we will get 
the excess on the other hand we have a n e to the power i n s and uh, so now excess bar this this one I can write this as summation over n a minus of n bar e to the power i n s because n is varying over z. So, I just make a change of variable from n to minus of n and this is also I can rewrite this as b of minus of n bar e to the power i n s. Now, if this and this are compared then we get a n equal to a minus of n bar and b n equal to b minus n bar. And look at the what we know the area is given by one half of the modulus of 0 to 2 pi y prime s x s minus y s x prime s d s. And uh, which by the Percival identity, so this is what is that what we know in the Percival identity is uh, uh, x y as the function this is going to be the x hat of n y hat of n bar. Therefore, this is uh, 1 by 2 pi if you want to write 1 by this one is 1 by 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi x s y s bar d s. So, now if I replace y by y prime then what you are going to get as you recall that the y prime uh, Fourier series what we had uh, seen is that i n uh, b n e to the power i n s that is what the Fourier series is. Now, if we have a bar there you are going to get the bar and both the i factor is going to come out. So, therefore, mod is going to kill your i therefore, what you left with for this n a n b n bar because this is uh, real valued. So, y prime of s bar is equal to y s and then this is b n minus a n bar. Okay. So, what we know is that a n b n bar minus b n a n bar this is lesser equal to just by simple triangle inequality this is lesser equal to twice mod of a n into mod of b n because this is lesser equal to this mod plus this mod and mod goes uh, bar is go, goes away. So, this is mod of a n minus plus b n and which is lesser equal to by the geometric mean and arithmetic mean. So, this is going to be lesser equal to mod of a n square plus mod of b n square. Okay. So, now what we know is that mod of n is lesser equal to mod of n square because n is varying over z therefore, mod n is uh, this. So, now uh, a is lesser equal to what we have seen is that this is mod n uh, mod of a n square plus mod of b n square. Now, this is again lesser equal to because mod n is lesser equal to mod n square. So, this dominates this. Now, this as you can see that this we have by the Planserol formula what we have said that this is equal to 1 because this is the mod of x prime of a square plus mod y prime of a square and which we have taken it to be equal to 1 the L 2 norm of that is equal to 1. So, then this becomes pi. So, therefore, that is what essentially we wanted to prove that A is lesser equal to pi because we are taking uh, uh, we have done this. Now, for the equality. Now, if A is equal to pi times summation over n varies over z 
mod n mod of a n square plus mod of b n square which is equal to pi times mod of a n square plus b n square times mod n square which is again equal to pi because you see in the previous one what we have seen is that uh, these are all the equality inequality. So, now if the equality happens suppose this is given to be pi then what happens is that all this intermediate inequality they will become equality. Now, this tells us that this is all the, this is equal to this. Now, as you can see if mod n is not equal to 1 minus 1 or 0, then mod n is going to be strictly less than mod of n square. But now, however, we are saying that this equality happens. Therefore, the a n and b n they are 0 if mod n is greater then 1 that means if mod n is greater or equal to 2 if it is non zero then we can't say that this inequality is go, equality is going to hold only possibility is that n equal to 0 or and n equal to 0 this vanishes so n equal to 1 and minus 1 so therefore xs this is equal to a minus 1 e to the power minus is plus a 0 plus a 1 e to the power i s. So, the, in the Fourier series a n's are 0 of x, the a n's are 0 for n mod n greater or equal to 2. So, now the Fourier series of x s becomes this. So, this is a trigonometric polynomial which will look like this. Similarly, the y s will look like b minus 1 e to the power minus of i s plus b 0 plus b 1 e to the power i s. Therefore, as we have already noticed, we have observed that a 1 a n is equal to a minus n bar when because x is a real valued function then equating both we have got this relation and b 1 is equal to b minus 1 bar. So, therefore, what do you get over here? and we have 2 mod of a 1 square plus mod of b 1 square is equal to 1. Also, we have the geometric and arithmetic mean. Uh, so, now all in the equality every inequality becomes the equality. Therefore, what we get is that equality of g m and a m we get mod of a 1 is equal to mod of b 1 which is equal to 1 half. Okay, so, then obviously, this is lying on the circle of the radius half. So, this a 1 is 1 by 2 e to the power i alpha and b 1 is equal to 1 by 2 e to the power i beta for some alpha and beta. Now, already we know that a 1 b 1 bar minus b 1 a 1 bar is equal to 1 half that is in our calculation what we had seen and then this will imply that this mod a 1 b 1 bar is equal to 1 half e to the power minus of i alpha then e to the power e to the power i alpha e to the power minus of i alpha. Uh, so, this is 1 by 4 e to the power i alpha minus beta minus 1 by 4 e to the power i minus i alpha minus beta. So, this mod is equal to 1 by 4 into 2 i uh, mod sin alpha minus beta. So, this is nothing but uh, uh, this is equal to 1 half. So, this is 1 half goes away. So, this means I am going to get that mod of sin alpha minus beta is equal to 1. So, if this is 1 then I we can say that alpha minus beta is going to take plus or minus some odd multiple of pi by 2. So, this is 2 k plus 1 pi by 2. So, therefore, x s which is equal to if we put the value of s 
remember that what is our excess? This is a minus 1 e to the power minus of i s plus a 0 plus a 1 e to the power i s and uh, therefore, if we add this to a minus 1 is a 1 bar and uh, so what you are going to get that this is nothing but a naught cos alpha plus beta and similarly y s depending on the parity of the I mean k this is going to be b naught plus or minus sin alpha plus s. Nevertheless, in either of this case x minus of a a naught square plus y minus of s b naught square this is going to be equal to 1 and uh, that that is nothing but a circle. So, this proves the isoperimetric inequality that in a simple closed curve with the fixed uh, length then this is going to be uh, always lesser equal to L square by 4 pi and uh, the equality will hold only if and only if it is a circle. So, um, that means any so circle is the curve which encloses simple closed curve C 1 curve which encloses the largest area. Okay. So, that is one application of uh, the isoperimetric problem. So, now I would uh, like to have another application of the Fourier series. Okay. So, now this is a bit of a number theoretic application what we are going to uh, discuss. So, for that let let us define if I take a x is in R, then all of us we know what do we mean by bracket of x. This is the largest integer less or equal to x. Now, I denote the fractional part of x is denoted by x which is x minus bracket of x. As you can see that this clearly belongs to the closed 0 1 open interval. That means, wherever suppose this is 0, 1, 2 like this, suppose you have a 1.3 here, then the fractional part is going to be here. So, so we, we define another relation on R is that x is related to y, where x and y they belongs to R if so which means uh, if uh, x minus of y this belongs to z. That means 1.3 and 16.3 they are related. So, now because the fract in other words what I am saying you take the fractional part of x and you take the fractional part of y then they are going to be equal then I will say that x is related to y. Of course, x is related to x and y if x is related to y then y is related to x and if x is related to y and y is related to z therefore, then x minus of z is equal to x minus of y minus of z minus of y. So, now this is an integer and this is an integer the difference of the two is an integer. So, therefore, this is an equivalence uh, relation. So, one can actually construct the equivalence class in terms of the fractional part of a number. So, which means uh, uh, if I take 
a number between 0 and 1, it has its own representative between 1 and 2, 2 and 3, uh, 3 and 4, like this. So, this is essentially a kind of if you push with the integer, if you add on, so you are going to get infinitely countably many points of this corresponding to this, uh, this number between 0 and 1. Okay. So, now I take a number, suppose gamma, this is in R. Now, I consider the sequence of fractional part of n gamma. Now, this sequence, this belongs to 0, 1 for all n belongs to z. So, what, what then I consider this sequence n gamma. That is, let us write it down. So, this is fractional part of gamma, fractional part of 2 gamma, fractional part of 3 gamma, if I am taking just the n in n, if you 1, 2, 3, 4 like this. Okay. So, now let us say I consider this sequence. Now, is it necessarily true that this sequence first of all is going to be an infinite sequence, which means the uh, uh, there will not be any repetition, there will be infinitely many distinct numbers in for every gamma belongs to R. For example, let us take first that gamma is equal to P by Q. Then the first one I will write P by Q fractional part, the next one I will write 2 P by Q goes on let us say q minus 1 p by q and then q p by q. Now, q p by q is nothing but this is equal to fractional part of p which is equal to 0. So, now when we are going to start again suppose q plus 1 p divided by q, if I take the fractional part here, then this is going to be the fractional part of p plus p by q and then this is nothing but the fractional part of p by p by q which you are landing off here. And q plus 2 if you take, then you are going to land here. So, now this is going to repeat after every q, therefore, this can only take the value from this to this. So, this is not an infinite number. Now, what about if, uh, if gamma is irrational? If gamma is irrational, then let us say suppose in one of gamma fractional part, this is equal to n 2 of gamma. So, can this be possible? Now, as you can, as you can see that uh, if the fractional part they are equal, then we know that this n 1 gamma is congruent to n 2 gamma because n 1 gamma minus of n 2 gamma, this is uh, because n 1 gamma is integer part of this plus fractional part of n 1 of gamma and n 2 gamma, this is equal to integer part of n 2 gamma plus n 2 of gamma. Now, if I take that difference n 2 gamma minus of n 1 gamma, this is equal to n 1 gamma n 2 gamma minus the integer part of n 1 of gamma, this belongs to z. Therefore, n 2 gamma minus of n 1 of gamma, this is equal to k, where k is some integer. This will imply, suppose if n 1 is not equal to n 2, if 
n 1 is not equal to n 2, then gamma is equal to k by n 2 minus of n 1, which belongs to q, but we have started with an irrational number. So, therefore, for any uh, irrational gamma n, n gammas they are distinct. Hence, we have an infinite set countably it is a sequence infinite sequence and uh, how uh, densely they are inside this interval 0 1. That is uh, what we will see is that in fact, this sequence is dense in 0 1 in the sense that you take any interval a b then there will exist one such element there. As a matter of fact, we will prove much more than this in the next lecture. Thank you.